So this is my centrifugal casting machine that I made. And today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about how it works, what the parts are, and uh, lubrication point, a couple of the different features of the machine. And then we're gonna go ahead and demonstrate how it works and we'll even go ahead and cast something with it. Um, so this is, like I said, centrifugal casting machine. It uses centrifugal force to push molten metal that's inside of a crucible into a mold and you use it for casting jewelry pieces you can make parts with it um, if you're making something you know smaller out of brass or something like that uh, you can cast any type of soft metal like that i use it primarily for casting gold and silver jewelry and it has done a great job so far even though i've only used it a few times since i've built it um, I feel like it's, it's going to be a really reliable machine and it's uh, definitely my go-to for casting jewelry now. So, first of all, you have your main arm. Okay, this arm is comprised of a uh, very long stud with some weights. You have a bracket that connects it to the actual main arm shaft here. On the bottom, I have a few points where I can fit a rod through. And if you look, that is where the crucible would go. You have control over where your crucible is on your machine. If you slide that rod back and forth. And I even put a little rubber stopper in here in case you drop it. Um, it won't damage the crucible, which of course happened to me already. It's, it's cracked, but that was before I had that stopper in there. So now you can, you know, let it go and it won't crack. Over here on the end, this is where, this is the mold holder, and this is where I would put a mold that you're casting. This is what we're going to cast here in a little bit. Um, there's a mold of a ring in there made out of wax, and we're going to be casting it into 14 karat white gold. But that would go right there, and then you have your little latch to lock it in place. And so now that's not going anywhere, and the crucible would go right here. And you can slide that forward and backward to uh, up right up to the mold. We're going to take that out for now. Take our crucible out because we don't need it right now. And so the next thing to talk about is this is called a fan gear right here. It's attached to the main shaft. And if you look, the main shaft also turns this e-gear, this gear right here, I uh, carved it out of wood and I actually casted it into aluminum. This is a wooden mold right here that I made. And you can see it looks remarkably similar to that e-gear. Um, I drilled some holes in it and put some set screws in it to hold it to that, secure it to that shaft very firmly. So when you turn that main shaft, that e-gear turns and so does this uh, fan gear. That's what I was gonna get to next. So this fan gear has six blades on it, and these two pins right here, I call the firing pins, because this is what allows all of the energy from your machine, and we'll get to the energy source here in a little bit, all of the energy from your machine is going to go through these firing pins and actually allow this arm to turn as fast as this shaft. Uh, but so next we have two pillow block bearings on the inside of the machine. You probably can't see them very well, but they're uh, just like these two right here. These are two mounted opposite, facing away from each other, bolted together, and they have those firing pins going through two of the holes in the side. Uh, but So there's two more just like that right here. On the E-gear, I put two sections of chain right here going all the way down and they connect to the double E gear. On the double E gear, there is four springs mounted. So they're just hanging on there. And I actually made this one out of a chunk of, I think it's three eighths or half inch uh, steel. And I literally just grinded out the shape and drilled some holes in it and that was about it. These springs down here simply connect to a rod that goes through the bottom of the machine. I know you can't see it on camera very well, but that's uh, literally as simple as that. They just connect onto that rod. And then on this side of the machine, you have the main gear. This is the main um, mechanism that allows you to turn, load, and lock the machine. Um, there's a 
a nut on the end of it that I welded so that you can, you can grab it with a uh, wrench if you want, just like that. On this, uh, this right here is a pawl. So this pawl is going to lock into that gear when I want it to. And uh, like right now, the spring is engaged into that pawl. So every time this machine turns, it's going to lock into place just like that. And it cannot turn the other way because uh, that paw is locking that gear. And so the way that I would release it is you can uh, take the safety off, which is flipping that spring. And then when you hit the button, it releases. And of course, we'll do a, a full load here in a little bit. So those are the main components of the machine. Of course, you have the frame and it's bolted to the table, which is bolted to the frame of the building that we're in, actually. Um, so it's very secure. You know, I can shake it and you can see it bend a little bit, but it's not going anywhere. It's uh, nice and securely mounted. You know, you could really crank on this thing and it's very secure. It's, it's not going anywhere. Um, so we've gone over basically all the parts. We'll go ahead and load the machine. I'll show you how I load it. And then we'll go ahead and unload it. And you can get to see what that looks like. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to move our weight to the opposite side of our arm here to give a little bit of a counterbalance because I'm not going to run this machine right now with a mold in it. This is something that you want to keep very secure until you're actually ready to cast and right now I'm not ready to cast. So I'm going to leave that out for now and we'll have to change the weight distribution. Unfortunately, I lost all the video of me actually building this thing, but I might end up taking it apart one day and showing you how to put, put it together. All right, so we've got our weight moved to the other side. And uh, one thing I'll go over real quick, before we actually load and unload the machine, I'll talk about lubrication points. There's a couple very critical lubrication points on the machine. The first one would be this arm right here, this shaft. Usually put just a line, a bead, all the way down like that. And that will allow you to uh, keep a nice oiled uh, transition of the crucible to the mold. Um, this is a heated spot. This spot's going to get very hot, so you might have to re-oil it or use uh, high temperature oil on it. Uh, but that's really about all you need for that. <clears throat> and of course you have underneath the arm, this is where you move that crucible. I put like a little dot right here of oil and that will keep that nice and lubricated for you. Uh, another lubrication point is going to be the pillow block bearings themselves. You've got a couple caps in here where you can uh, insert some grease into this one, this one, and then you have two right here. There's a, a cap here and a cap there just to lubricate those bearings. And so now we'll go ahead and actually load the machine. So in order to load this machine, what we're going to do is I'm going to flip this spring to the opposite side of the opposite side of the the bracket that holds this, holds the pawl, and you might have noticed that this handle went up. Okay, it, it's up engaged into this gear, so I can push it down, and this gear is released, and you let it go, and now it's locked, so it can't turn clockwise. What I'm going to do is I'm going to verify that all of my springs are attached to this bottom shaft. So what I can do is I can make sure those springs are on there, and I'll start turning this by hand. Okay, so all four springs are attached to that rod. Everything is secure so far. We've only gone about two or three clicks um, by hand. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my wrench and I'm gonna start cranking on this thing. 
usually from past experience of running this machine, I know that this these chains are going to wrap around this e-gear maybe one to one and a half times. So I'll just go ahead and start cranking on it. Every single time that this gear clicks, it gets locked by that paw. And, and the fact that this spring is over here on this side, um, this is the safety of your machine. Even if you were to bump into this or hit it or something was to break or, or whatever, this gear is going to lock pretty, pretty quickly. It's not going to go, it's going to go maybe one tick backwards and that's it. Um, so you can feel pretty secure that it's nice and safe. All right, so we're about a full turn right now. Um, I'm not going to disengage that, that safety mechanism until I'm basically ready to cast. I'm going to leave that in the safe position. So what we'll do is we'll take her arm, and you want your arm to be level. You want it to be nice and flat and level while you cast. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line up these firing pins to the fan gear and to one of the blades on the fan gear. And the first thing I notice is that that's pretty level. But I'm going to go ahead and do at least maybe two more ticks and see if I can get that more level. And also, this is a torque wrench that shows foot-pounds. So I'm going to read how many foot-pounds we've got as I turn that. And right now, we're already at 55, 60, 65, almost 70 pounds of, of torque right there. We'll check our firing pins, see if they're level. We'll go one more tick. And we're at... 70, almost 75 foot-pounds of torque on that. And that looks pretty good to me. That looks pretty level. Um, so basically, the general operation would be, and of course, there's going to be a mold right here. So if I let this go, there's too much weight on this side. But if there's a mold right here weighing it down, it would stay about right there. So... The first thing that we'll do before we get our blowtorch out or anything like that is we would grab our mold from the fire, from the fire, put it in the holder and lock, lock it into position. And then we're going to take the safety off of the machine. And the way that we do that is we flip the spring back to the other side of the pawl. So right now the machine is loaded and it's unlocked. Okay, the safety is off of this machine. So right now, we're ready to cast. We're, this machine is ready to be unloaded. It's ready to be fired. So we would have our mold right here. You would have your crucible in the holder, and you would be taking your blowtorch, and you'd be shaking it around a little bit, shaking it and melting it. You're melting your metal right now. After about a minute or two, your metal is melted, and what you would do is you'd slide it forward up to your mold, and, of course, right now the weight is off, so I can't really let it go without it falling. So I'm going to do this a little bit differently than I would if I was casting. You'll see how it works when I cast. Um, but basically, you would melt your metal, slide it forward, and then right at this moment, you'd be ready to cast. And what I would do is I would take my rawhide hammer, because there's kind of a sharp corner right here. You don't really want to hit that with your fist. So you take your rawhide hammer, and right at the moment that you strike that button, Right when you pull that trigger, you have to pull your torch out of the way as quickly as you can. So the motion would look something along the lines of that right there. You hammer your trigger, or you pull your trigger, and you get your torch out of the way immediately. But like I said, right now we're just going to do this demonstration. You have to make sure that your firing pins are forward the whole time. Your firing pins must be engaged into that fan gear. And we will go ahead and release the machine. And of course, you can see it's a little bit off balance because of the weight distribution that I was talking about. If there was a mold in there, it would be much more balanced than that. It was kind of shaky. That's why I moved these forward at the beginning. Um, I'll go ahead and move them back so I don't forget when we cast. 
but that was the unloading of the machine. So you get to see a little bit about how it works, what I'm doing, and why I'm doing it um, before I actually cast. That way when you see me cast the ring that we're making, uh, you won't be confused as to what's happening, what's going on, why am I doing what I'm doing, and all that. Well, I see all of my gold is in there, in the mold. I think it's honestly probably going to be fine. Thank you. 